So 2020 was immensely challenging for the planet as a whole. On a personal level, I found myself attempting to manifest two of the biggest things, material things I'd ever attempted to manifest. And my year kind of went in highs and lows as this manifestation drew closer to me and then further away. There were moments where I thought that it wouldn't happen, but I just kept going. And here I am now with the first Manifestation Monday of 2021 and my success story from the last year, my huge Manifestation success story. Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Leora Alexandra, it's me. Welcome to the Baby Elephant community. On this channel, we talk about the law of attraction, spirituality, self-development, and so much more. And I know you've all missed it. Manifestation Monday is here. There's no guarantee that's gonna be back for good. I am being very true to what feels right for me to share with you and to create the kind of content that I wanna talk about. So when it feels right, when it feels natural, I definitely wanna share, share that. Today's Manifestation Monday is just going to be my manifestation story. I'm going to take you through how I manifested at 27, just turned 28, single woman, first generation American, you know, from immigrant parents. I manifested buying my own home by myself, no husband, no wife, no parents' money, just a ton of belief and a ton of desire and faith. So Manifestation Mondays is this series that I've done over the years where I share success stories from other people, my own success stories, the success stories of my friends and my family, and kind of like how that thing was manifested and any tips. And these tips and these manifestation techniques, of course, can be used for anybody manifesting anything. So just really hearing success stories allows you to tap into the possibility that these things could happen to you and that other things that vibrate at this frequency can happen to you. So I've said this in other videos, it's really important to listen to success stories because it opens up the doorway of possibility. It shows you, look, this big thing was manifested, you could manifest your big thing too, right? And whenever somebody traverses the pathway to a big manifestation, it makes that pathway easier for the rest of us, right? Like how you would have a, a hiking trail. The more people go down this hiking trail, the easier it is to follow their footsteps, right? So it works in the same way with manifestation. Somebody manifests, you know, marrying some celebrity is a success story, right? Anybody else who has that desire now has an easier chance at attaining it because it's like, oh, I can access that frequency. So in my courses and everything that we talk about, we often share success stories and I encourage sharing of success stories because one person succeeding is the rest succeeding. So we have to feel really good for people. And if you feel good about this, please give this video a thumbs up to affirm blessings into your life now. Before we get going, Manifestation Monday has its first sponsor of the year, which is Skillshare, one of my favorites. You guys already know, Skillshare has been a lifesaver for myself, for my friends, for my family, and for so many of you throughout the last year when it was really tough, we turned to Skillshare to learn new skills and to explore our creativity. And no matter what 2021 holds, what we do know is that Skillshare will be there for us to allow us to continue to explore our mind, to explore our creativity, to learn new skills and pick up new hobbies. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for lifelong learners like you and me. I'm constantly looking for ways to access that my inner muse to unlock my creativity. And I did that recently by uh, taking the Creativity Unleashed class by YouTuber Nathaniel Drew. Um, that helped me so much. It really set me on course for the content that I wanna make for 2021. I really recommend trying out that class on Skillshare. And right now I'm taking another class to understand my own creative process a little bit better. It's called Find Your Style, Five Exercises to Unlock Your Creative Identity. It's taught by Andy J. Pizza. So Skillshare classes combine a mixture of video lessons and class projects to help you learn incredible new skills and to explore your creativity. And best of all, with the annual premium membership, you can have access to unlimited classes for under $10 a month. 
Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 1,000 people to click my link below will get a free trial to try out the premium membership and explore your creativity. Highly recommend trying out those two classes that I mentioned. I'll list them down below. Basically, today's Manifestation Monday is going to be kind of like a story time because I have to take you through this timeline of how I manifested this home and to announce where I bought the home. I bought a home in one of my favorite places in the world amongst some of my favorite people in the world in Sedona, Arizona. So if you've seen any of my vlogs of Sedona, you know how special it is. If you've been to Sedona, let me know what your favorite thing is about Sedona. For me, it's the hiking, the energy, uh, the beautiful, beautiful red rocks. It's the community there. My favorite restaurants are there. I'm always making friends everywhere I go. I love Sedona so much. And I didn't know that that's where I would end up, but I was guided there by divine guidance, truly guided. Yeah, so that's where I bought my home and I hope to be able to turn it into a place where I can host retreats and host some of you over there. Hopefully, we'll see. Um, so let's start with when I set my intention. So I actually went over this in a different video when I discussed how I bought my Tesla. In, on June 12, 2019, I went onto the Baby Elephant Facebook group and I made a very bold statement. This is what I wrote and I'll put it right here too. I haven't had physical material things that I've wanted to manifest in so long, you guys. What I've been manifesting has been emotional, healing, things for others, messages, etc. But I do now, so I'm putting it here so we can all return to it when it happens and we have this proof for a future video. The video is here. <laughs> I'm manifesting my dream home in the perfect place on the planet. I will own this home. I'm manifesting a brand new Tesla with vegan leather seats. These magical things will come to me in the most perfect way sometime in 2020. And so it is. And so I posted that on there. It got about a thousand likes and hearts and thumbs up and, and 100, over a hundred comments. So all those people were adding um, their energy into my manifestation. So they all helped me. And all of you always help me. I've been talking about this journey of finding a home for quite a bit now. Yeah, so these are very physical things. And I would love to talk about how manifesting physical things such as a home and a car and things like that affect the ego because it is all ego strengthening techniques. It is a way to cope with being human. And that is, I'm very quite aware of that. These things make you more dense. But on the other hand, we did come here to be human, to explore and to see what we can create. So the fact that I was able to create this situation in which I manifested this car in a home by myself, it's a home. That's a huge deal. I'm, I'm shocked about it still. You know, it's, it's, a, it's big for me. That's part of the human experience. That's part of being a creator. And I'm proud of it. And I'm happy. And I hope that it can inspire others to do their best to to manifest their big desires too. And your big desire doesn't have to be a house. It could be a good grade on your report card, or it could be, you know, your partner, or it could be manifesting some essential oils or a book that you wanted or a free cup of coffee, whatever it is that you want. Once somebody has paved that path for us, it opens the doorways of opportunity. And I think that's really important. So I already talked about how I manifested my Tesla. I'll link that video down below for you. This was my house was something that literally January 1st, 2020, I began to start putting my intention out into the universe and saying, you know, this year I'm buying this home. Okay. I looked all over the U S I even visited different places, different places in California. I even went to Texas. I, I went everywhere. I really did not know where I wanted to go. But what I kept saying is that I'm manifesting my dream home in my, the best location for me. Now I spoke to, to some astrologers and there's an interesting story about an astrologer that I'll share soon. I, I really wanted to know where is the best place for me to be. And none of them really gave me um, answers that I was like, oh, I have to go buy a house there. Like I have to go do that there, right? So I didn't feel called anywhere. Now during 2020, I did two road trips to Sedona. And the second time that I was there, a seed was planted and I was like, oh, I can kind of see myself here, but I wasn't set on it. I really wasn't set on it. I loved it, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to live there. You know, there was one thing that I was, that I often did 
And I think that this truly was the manifest. Other than prayer, I prayed on this house. I constantly prayed on this. And when I say prayer, I do have a connection with God. My understanding of God, you guys might know already. It is this omniscient, all one source energy. It is me. It is all of us. We are sparks of this divine creator. It's not like this bearded man in the sky. That's never how I've seen God. Or maybe it was when I was younger, but not anytime recently for sure it's god source energy right so i would talk to god and i would just talk i would i would claim it a lot like thank you so much for this perfect home that came to me in divine timing in the divine way that came to me perfectly perfect price perfect place a perfect location everything is just divine right so there was a lot of prayer i prayed often i really recommend adding prayer which is literally speaking to the divine um there's a word for it in hebrew that my friend recently taught me i don't remember what the word is but it basically is this concept of, of speaking to god as if god is your own father or your own brother or sister or family member it's speaking very casually to god and saying you know Thank you for everything you've done for me. I really want this though. I would really like this. Please give this to me. Really speaking casually to God. So not necessarily going to a temple or a church and praying, which is beautiful and you should do that. And I do that as well. Um, do that if that resonates. But more like waking up in the morning and just having this conversation, you know, knowing that God is all around you and speaking very casually and asking for things. Ask and you shall receive, right? And I did a lot of that this year. I consistently asked so it's not that i was putting this thing on a pedestal and i was obsessed with it i wasn't there were moments of desperation where i was like you know i said i would manifest this by the end of the year but it's looking like it's way too big of a of an ordeal i don't know if i'm actually going to get this and in those moments i got further away from my manifestation so when i felt that way i had to just continuously bring myself back to god back to that back to faith back to knowing I just have to know that it's going to happen in divine timing exactly in the perfect way. And that's why I kept bringing myself to that. In the perfect way, the perfect place, the perfect time. It's coming to me. It is mine. I am a homeowner. Now, the thing that I was about to say before prayer is something that I did this entire year is I focused on my own frequency. And a lot of people don't want to hear this because they we want like a specific manifestation technique. But my best manifestation technique is tending to my frequency, tending to my vibration, making sure I'm in a high vibration, taking care of myself, taking care of my loved ones, making sure that my immediate environment is calm and beautiful and peaceful in order to align to everything else in that uplifted frequency. When you are vibrating at a certain positive frequency that feels good to you, you can't help but continue to manifest more things that make you feel that way, that make you feel good. So I would align myself to that frequency and I have so many videos about how I raise my frequency. It's basically just about taking care of yourself, being good to yourself, being good to others, being good to the earth, being in nature a lot, having nutrient dense foods, being hydrated, reading and consuming positive content, working out, moving your body. I remained in a high vibration as often as possible. Whenever I dipped, I took care of myself. I allowed myself to feel what I felt. I did breath work. I journaled. I did what I had to do. And all year long, I focused on my passion. I focused on things that make me feel good when I could, right? So I wasn't spending this entire year obsessively looking for homes, obsessively thinking, well, what if it doesn't happen? I just said, it's going to happen. Let me tend to the rest of my life. And now every time that I was in this high vibration, I would sing and dance and repeat, I am a homeowner. I own the perfect home. I'm so grateful for this amazing, beautiful, incredible home. December 1st comes around and that's when I was like, oh, it's just something downloaded in me. And I was like, I want a home in Sedona. So the Sedona market is absolutely insane right now. A house would go on the market and would literally be bought an hour later and not even the best homes really things that were overpriced for you're not really getting your money's worth so when this one house came in the market after seeing dozens of them and my realtor sending me ones and i'm just like oh these homes aren't good and it's already december am i really gonna buy a house how that that's unrealistic right escrow is usually at least 30 days am i really going to buy a house before the end of the year 
is that actually going to happen? When this one house came on the market two weeks into the month, it's literally, I think it was December 9th when I first saw it. So one week into the month, I was like, oh my God, this is my house. But all these other homes that were a lot more expensive and not as good as this home were swept off the market so fast. So I tried to act fast, right? My realtor was not uh, enthusiastic about it originally because I wasn't pre-approved for a loan yet. There's there's a lot up against me, but I prayed. I prayed to God. I said, if this is the house for me, it's going to be mine. I know it is. I call God Abba. Okay, so that's what you say. That's how you say Dad in Hebrews. And mind you, it's not that I'm saying that God is a masculine energy. It's just what I'm used to addressing God as. I've met the feminine version of God. I felt that energy in my life. I very much know and am acquainted with the goddess. But when I speak, when I do that prayer, when I speak to God like it, they're my father, I call God Abba. So I was just like, Abba, I want this house. If it's meant for me, let this process be smooth. Let it work out well. And I just prayed. And I imagined and visualized myself in this home. I saw how it furnished it. And I imagined having you guys over there, hosting retreats there, you know, four day retreats, what I would do, who I would bring in, how we would use the space. And I felt the emotions and I felt so uplifted and I entered flow state and it felt so right. Now you can ask Aaron Dowdy, you can ask anybody about this. Everybody was shocked at how easily I was able to get this house. It just all worked in my favor. My loan officer said that there, he pulled off a miracle because originally I wanted to close by the end of the year, right? But he's like, there's prob, there's, it's very unlikely. Escrow at least takes 30 days and I put my offer in on December 14th. It was accepted the next day, which is crazy because there were like 10 other offers but this person chose me. And then I told my realtor and my loan officer, I said, you know, I actually don't need to close before the end of the year. But for some reason, I mean, for many reasons, I'm sure, they insisted that we're going to close before the end of the year. So we did, okay? I closed before the end of the year. And to reiterate what I did before I tell you the astrology story, which is really cool, is I prayed. I asked for what I wanted. I prayed and I talked to God source energy like my father. I requested. It's a plea or a decree. It's a request from the divine. But I always like to say, if this is meant for me, and if this isn't meant for me, something better is coming. That's how you protect yourself. So you say this or something better, right? Let me know if you've ever used this or something better and then gotten something way better comment down below. I really want to hear that story. The second thing that I want to reiterate is I sang and I danced about this. So I visualized and I danced around my apartment and I sang about being a homeowner and I sang about the miracles that are coming into my life. I made it fun. That is such a potent energy to tap into when manifesting. Highly recommend. The next very important thing is I didn't put it on a pedestal. I kept saying, I just surrendered. If this is meant for me, if this is going to happen, it's going to happen. I'm not going to force it. I will not force it. And then everything just fell together perfectly. The loan came through. The money came through. The price of the house was great. Everything just worked out perfectly. And it just so happens that I'm now going to be neighbors with some of my best friends in the world, which is insane. Our nature, it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be enjoyable. It's supposed to be easy. Um, and whenever we lose faith, we take ourselves a little bit further away from our manifestation, but we come right back when we go after that faith. There's nothing too big. There's nothing too small. It's just supposed to be fun. I think that a lot of us once, you know, we're always, always manifesting. The second that we're like, okay, I'm going to consciously do this. Then we start to wonder if we're doing it right, but you're doing it right because it's literally your birthright. You are a creator. You were created to be a perfect creator. That's what you do. So a really quick little tangent of this astrology thing that happened. So back in August, when I was still not sure where I wanted to get a house, I didn't know what was going to happen. And I thought that I needed to buy a house before the end of 2020, like for tax reasons and stuff to create an, uh, all this stuff. Um, so I reached out to this astrologer that I follow on Twitter. Her name is Amy. Um, it's at Starheel. 
she was putting out this offer where you tell her an important date and uh, something that you want to do and she'll t give you a good date and time to do that thing. So I emailed Amy and I asked her when is the best date for me to buy a house before 2020? And she emailed me this, I checked this back in August and she said, unfortunately, I didn't see a date except this one date. And in my mind, it was, the date was December 31st. I got like the end of the year. That's, that's what I remembered from December, right? I remembered from that email that she said that the best date for me to close is December 31st. That's what I remembered. And I was like, well, that's going to be difficult. And I remember calling my mom and saying, is there a way for me to close on New Year's Day? Like it seems... It seems almost, it seems very unlikely, but that's apparently the best day for me to uh, sign contracts and to close on a house, to buy a house. And my mom's like, yeah, that's really unlikely that that's going to happen. When December 14th came around and the 15th and I made my offer, I went back to that email. I was like, oh my God, there's a possibility that maybe it'll happen. And when I read, I was like, oh, it didn't say December 31st. It actually said December 28th. That would be the best date. And again, everybody was saying there's not much chance that you're going to close before the end of the year. Uh, December 28th comes around and a notary public was supposed to come to me with all the uh, contracts and documents that I had to sign. Now I remembered from checking that email earlier in the month that it said like December 28th, this is a really good day for you to sign contracts and you're going to get a really good return from this date. The notary public wasn't able to come. She said the next day is going to be better. So I was with my best friend Sasa and I was like, you know, I keep getting the date wrong. Won't it be crazy if the notary public is coming on the 29th and the email actually said the 29th? So I go back to my email and this is what it says. Remember I asked Amy, what's the best date for me to buy a house? And she says, unfortunately, I did not see any days I was comfortable suggesting by the end of the year except for December 29th. On this day, you will be having your Mercury return, which is great for negotiating and signing contracts. Also, Venus, the financial planet, will be sextile your natal Uranus and Neptune, showing a good return. So, she went on to say that there might be a little bit of frustration, but this is the best date of 2020 for me to buy a house. And it ends up being that I signed all my contracts on December 29th, on the day where my Mercury returned, and it was the best day for me to sign contracts and Venus made it so that I would be getting a good return from this house. There, were, there was such a slim possibility that I would be closing by the end of the year. I ended up closing, done deal, December 31st, right before 2021. So the manifestation came true. Astrology is so legitimate. Of course, there could be some sort of subconscious hand in hand with me manifesting the signing of the contracts on December 29th. Mind you, I don't even know anything about buying a house. I didn't know that I would have to sit down with a notary public and sign contracts and things like that. It ended up being on the perfect date. So miracles happen, magic happens, and everything is happening for us. And when we have perfect faith, when we really believe in ourselves, when we believe in the universe, and we believe in that divine connection with this higher aspect of ourselves, this divine consciousness, and allow it to guide us, it will take us to places that literally, it feels like a video game sometimes. I'm like, is this real? Why am I like feeling like a main character right now? <laughs> Life could be so fun, you know, and there's definitely difficult things happening in the world all the time, always. But that doesn't mean that you don't deserve to enjoy your human experience that you were so lucky to receive. You're so lucky to be in this body that you've chose in this situation that you chose watching this video and letting it uplift and inspire you to live the kind of life you deserve to live there's always going to be duality in the world polarity in the world good and bad evil you know there's things are going to happen pain suffering and sadness but also a lot of beauty a lot of love and you deserve to experience the good I know that sometimes we're programmed to think, well, there's so much suffering, then I should be suffering too, but why? Your suffering only contributes more suffering to the world. Your joy contributes more joy to the world. I always tell you this, and this is such an important lesson. Your happiness is significant. Your happiness matters. Your individual experience is important. You embodied for a reason. You incarnated for a reason, not to suffer, 
but to improve the world through your own happiness and your individual happiness is what's going to improve the world. That's it for this Manifestation Monday. If you guys have questions about how I manifested, if I was unclear about anything, please leave them down below. I'd love to keep the conversation going. I wanna hear your manifestation success stories. It's been such a long time, so please share them, raise the frequency, add to the goodness uh, that we're experiencing right now. Let's start this train of positivity because it really does start with us. And if it's not us, if not our community, you know, then who? We must be the light in this world. We must. We must strive to be the light in this world. It's why we are here. It's why we incarnated. I hope that that brought some sort of inspiration to you in that. I want to know if you haven't manifested something that you want to share recently. What are your intentions for 2021? What's a big thing you want to manifest? If you could have anything, if you could do anything, which you can, what would it be? Leave that in the comment down below. You can say, I intend or I am manifesting. I have manifested. See, I use the words will in my intention and it still worked. So I do believe that as long as the intention is there, the way that you say it is going to be just perfect. Thank you so much for watching. I love you. And as always, keep your vibration way, way, way up. Bye. <laughs>